Hello and welcome to the Amber Spycast, your one-stop shop for all things His Dark Materials. Your Dark Materialists are myself, Alaric, and I'm going to throw it to Joanna, who's going to dive right back into our recap. An amazing recap that, by the way, she writes all these, and they're legit. So, Joanna, hit it. On it. So, in Lyra's world, the climate is changing because of the rip in the sky that Lord Azrael has made. Seraphina Pekala flies to the north to find Yorick Bernison, who is struggling to hunt down a walrus on the melting ice. With great guilt and remorse, she tells Yorick that his friend, Lee Scoresby, is dead, and that she preserved his body with a spell so that Yorick could pay his last respects. Yorick tells her that he will go to Lee's body, but then continues south to relocate his kingdom. Seraphina reveals that she is going in search of the Egyptians to enlist their help. All the while, scavenging foxes, possessing a crude grasp of language, listen in on Serafina and Yorick's conversation. Yorick swims a long journey south, passing from his world to the next. He comes upon the place where Lee Scoresby died, finding him perfectly preserved due to Serafina's spell. After paying his respects, Yorick removes the enchanted flower that maintained the spell and proceeds to eat the remains of his friend before continuing his journey south. Back north, a group of cliff guests capture and devour a fox who is babbling about a balloon man and king bear. Back in the Himalayas, a young servant girl, Amma, perseverates on Mrs. Coulter and on Lyra's condition. Wanting to help the beautiful holy woman, Amma sneaks away to procure a remedy for Lyra's sleeping sickness. After acquiring the special powder, Amma makes her way back to the cave to find Lyra, restless and unattended. Suddenly, Mrs. Coulter and her monkey demon arrive back at the cave, forcing Amma into hiding. From her narrow hiding place, Amma sees Mrs. Coulter concoct a sleeping draft and force the now conscious and frantic Lyra to drink from it. As Lyra falls back into a deep sleep, Mrs. Coulter sings her a lullaby, snipping a lock of Lyra's hair and placing it in a locket. Meanwhile, the golden monkey heartlessly tortures and kills a bat provided by Mrs. Coulter. Once Mrs. Coulter falls asleep, Amma sneaks away, making her way back down to the village. Horrified by what she has seen, Amma resolves to use the powder to revive and rescue Lyra. Travis, that was a whole lot, so what's your take? Um, really enjoyed it. Uh, really enjoyed these two chapters. I feel like um, we're, we've got some real forward motion here. A um, little uh, horrified at first by the eating of uh, Lee Scoresby, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, then I thought uh, Yurik's a little Klingon-like, and that's kind of a Klingon thing. So it was all good. This, so I think I talked about in periodically in the books. My mom told me when she read these, she was disgusted by them. The books. Mm-hmm. I, I was always trying to figure, pinpoint the moment where she stopped reading because she never finished it. Mm-hmm. And then the first time I read them, the part where. Yurik eats Lee was like, this is where she stopped. <laughs> like the first, I was like, she right. didn't want to read past this. He, he just ate. No, she's done. Closed book, shelf, done. He just ate Alexander Hamilton. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's a little, yeah, that's a lot. Though, you know, and again, t- not, not making the Klingon joke, but I mean, there are people who, or there were tribes who, you know, found eating the flesh of their family to be, um, to, to be an honor, you know, for both the, uh, the, the dead and the, uh, living. It was a, the flesh is a gift. Yeah. Yurik says it's a gift he to him and he good. hadn't eaten since, you know, he ate the, you know, he chased down the, um, the walrus, the walrus in the, in the water, you know? Yeah. And you know, the, the way it cuts, from that scene to him being in the woods and finding Lee, that has to be a significant amount of time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he swam to the other world. For, it's a, I mean, are we saying like a week, two weeks? Probably. I mean, polar bears do that. There's some As serious GPS course. going on with this guy because oh, he yeah. gets a really like kind of loosey-goosey description about where this place is. And he's like, all right, I'll go ahead and go there. <laughs> <laughs> Crossing through a world. You know, like going to right. another world. Right. Yeah. And we know that the geography isn't necessarily the same That's between right. worlds. Mm-hmm. So he's like, "That's no, all good. I know where I know where I'm going." Because and he knew by the taste of the water that he he uh, changed worlds. I thought that was awesome. That was cool. That, that is really cool. cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm glad you give him a pass for that <laughs> because I'm with your mom. I would like I like audibly was like, "What the? 
like, what <laughs> is that? And then I was reading and my son was like, what happened? You know, he was like all in. And I was like, no, no, no. Um, but yeah, I just, I had a hard time wrapping my brain and my heart around the fact that he like ate Lee Scorsese. And then I love, he's just like, it was a gift. He would, he would want me to eat him. <laughs> I was like, okay. I mean, I, I just imagine my... he's in the world of the dead. Go, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, no, no, I... what are you doing? Stop. <laughs> Do not seek the treasure. <laughs> that's yeah, that's rough. Oh man. You know, and the way that he's preserved is really interesting. It's a very like evocative thing where he ha- he's the only thing. There's he has some dried caked blood that's that's sort of outside of this protection zone. But he's pretty much all in one piece except for the the sort of look of pain that's on his face. Yeah. Uh he's also all in one piece essentially. So he really has been saved for him. Mhm. Yeah, it's pretty gross. I knew it was coming, and I was like, I don't really want to read this. Pretty gross. I'm with you, Joanne. It's like, yeesh. Yeah. And then if you think about the show, because we're sort of tied into the show here with our show, uh, with, will they keep this part? Will they keep that part? Mm. No way, right? Considering it's on at 8 o'clock on the BBC, and right. no, no gore. No gore. no way he's eating Lee Scoresby. And, and if you didn't show it, is there a way to suggest that he's eating Lee Scoresby without showing any kind of viscera well i mean he leaves he leaves the rest for others as a kind gesture like he eats his fill and then he like leaves the rest of lee he piles him back up again like he kind of puts it back together a little pile of lee yeah and scraps this is for the next person who swims through worlds swam through worlds and like needs a pick me up i guess (laughs) giblets yeah so maybe they could like cut to like a pile of Maybe not like bloody gross, whatever, but just kind of like, I don't know. Did he crush the flower? How did he remove the enchantment? Did he crush the flower or did he, what did he do with the flower? I'm looking. I thought he just removed it. Just yeah, I thought when he like them? used his claw and just like cut off his clothes. I thought the flower came off. It was kind of a moment there at the end where he discarded the flower or something. Mm-hmm. I was just curious how that worked. So just the fact that the flower was directly on top of him, it protected him a little bit. Yeah. It was a powerful flower. Yeah. And if only he had called her just a little bit oh, earlier. I know it. She's Quicksilver for crying out loud. Yeah, she would have been down like that. She'd have wiped everybody out in like two seconds, just like the show. Yeah. And Anyway. Anywho, so... So I, I jumped ahead a little bit. We were I got caught up in this whole you know eating Lee Scoresby thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, oh, answering yeah. your question about where the flower went. Yes. So um, after gathering the remaining fragments of Lee's body into a single heap, the bear lifted the flower in his mouth and dropped it in the center of them, as humans like to do. Huh. It's like a garnish. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I, it's I, like it's the like parsley. It's like the kale at the salad bar oh, un- no. underneath the underneath the bowls. <laughs> yeah, I kind of thought he was just kind of dropping the flower like a grave, but parsley works too. <laughs> I used to eat all the parsley. <laughs> I was the only kid that did that. I, I ate all the parsley. It was the curly parsley too, right? It wasn't even the like Italian oh, parsley. Yeah, it was the really. It was the one. It was supposed to be kind of a. I was told it was a palate cleanser. Mm-hmm. And the first time I experienced that was at Long John Silver's. It's always at the fish places because for yeah. me it was, uh, uh, um, gosh, uh, Chesapeake Bay Seafood House. Yeah, Arthur Treacher's had it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was something about that, vin- like whether you used vinegar the, or something. It was the malt vinegar, the lemon, and the parsley. It kind of all did a thing. Huh. I wonder if Lee wished he had some malt vinegar while he ate. Uh... I'm sorry, Uric put some malt vinegar on <laughs> It's like tartar sauce would be nice. <laughs> oh, that's hard. Do you have the cocktail sauce? <laughs> <laughs> We're terrible people. So, so, okay, so rewinding a little bit to Serafina talking to Yurik. Mm-hmm. This is a big exposition dump here. Uh, but the the something that t- you touched on here, Joanna, in your breakdown was the the significant climate change that's happening here now. Yes. It the it's decimated. Like, is it even repairable? You know, you feel like, how is this going to be fixed? The gap is widening. It's not just this little gash, right? Isn't it continuing to grow? Yeah. I mean, he just swam from world to world. So what used to be a gash has now got to be a huge window. Yeah. There's, there's no more ice. Yeah. So much so that he's thinking about moving all the bears South. Yeah. 
all of them. Yeah. He already chartered a boat. He's ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Did he leave without telling any of the other bears that he was leaving? I feel like he just bolted. It did feel like he just bolted, but I wonder if, you know, he, because I think what happens was, was he going, he, after he went to Lee, did he continue to go south? I thought he continued, right? Like he just kept going. I just thought he jumped into the water and said, okay, I'm going. And going and just kept going south. Yeah, just I don't went. Know. Yeah, he just got into the water without a splash. So, I mean, my guess is if he chartered a boat, he had some plans and maybe he just in, enacted them a little earlier than they planned. Yeah, maybe. Or, or the wheels were already in motion. Right. Mm -hmm. they, they were struggling to eat, you know, already. Just being mm -hmm. able to hunt. They didn't have any kind of luck hunting. Yeah. Right. Uh, Are we going to let um, the fact that a bunch of bears chartered a boat kind of go unmentioned? Was, I was just... <laughs> I'm having a difficult time with this. What is that? They're very capable walkers, you know? I feel yeah. like they can sort of... They seem to swim okay, and they seem to be able to walk long distances, but... I guess if you're talking about the North, so if you're talking about like Scandinavia and then Antarctica, I guess you would sort of need to travel that, in a different way. Is that where we're talking? When That's we what I was saying. South? All the way south. Mm -hmm. wow. Because you have to get back to ice again. Mm -hmm. It's true. That's true. So you're talking, you know, the entire length of the globe. Yeah. I mean, how big is that boat? Because there's like 200 bears in Spalberg. Well, in the show, there was only They're like 10. They're big. So. That's true. And they are big. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you're thinking there are 200 bears, it's going to be more than a boat. Right. You're talking like about like a tanker. Yeah. Yeah. But now mm -hmm. there's so much water. Like, you you know, if if water levels have risen so significantly because the entire polar ice cap has melted, then they could take a boat all the way there without any impedance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the whole world's got to be kind of jacked up at this point. Yeah. If the, if the ice caps have melted, I mean, we're talking like global flooding, things like that. It's a catastrophe. Yeah. And can it be repaired? Like, if if we went and closed this, would it immediately sort of reboot and go back to normal? Or is it is it forever ruined? I don't know how it would reboot without some kind of magic. Mm -hmm. do you know, I mean, I mean, do you know? I mean, I think it's it's like, it feels like it's a pretty permanent result. And just closing it back up wouldn't repair what was done. Unless mm -hmm. the whole world had a big Arctic flower. That well, Serafina gave them. Yeah, I mean, the temperature, I guess, would lower again, mm -hmm. but the ice would be in a different place because it would have been right. sort it of flattened out, you know? And like, yeah. Uh, we're probably getting hung up on this a little bit, but it is worth thinking about. But I do think what's worth thinking, also worth thinking about, is um, is Lord Osriel's plan, you know, worth basically the destruction of that world? Because that's what's happening. He never took that into account, especially because his plan is so much larger. He thinks what he's doing is well beyond what what it's not about our our living mm -hmm. state, right? Isn't it more about like our spiritual our souls? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. It's sort of, or he may not have thought about it at all. He doesn't yeah. care. I mean, you, you think about it, a guy who's just willing to uh, take an eleven year old and kill him mm -hmm. as a power source has got to be kind of, you know, cold and callous towards everybody else, too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it makes some sense. Yeah. True. So, um, Lee Scoresby, uh, the, Yurik, sort of finding out about Lee, and understand Lee was sort of like one human that he trusted and confided in, and he had sort of fought alongside, was enough to get him moving, but was it Lyra really that drove him to move to to commit to making that journey to protect her to find her oh i think so that's 100 percent it right lee was a little bit of the catalyst but ultimately he's going to find lyra yeah i mean revenge is one thing find looking at you seeing your friend and when after he died is is uh, one thing but he's he wants to save lyra i mean that is his goal she she even invokes his name in in her dream. Mm -hmm. She's like, Yurik will come, you know, Serafina will come. She's sort of counting on them still. Mm -hmm. I just feel like how are they? It feels feels like she's so kind of off the. She's she's missing. She's fully missing. How are they going to find her? If she, we know that obviously things are going to change in her situation, but at this moment, is she findable? Oh. 
she's in the same world as Yurik. I mean, yes, but he just left. Yeah. He left the world that she was in, going to look for her in the other world where he thinks mm-hmm. she is. Mm-hmm. But she's back in our world. Mm-hmm. Or back in Lyra's her. world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's it's like they're going the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. Which I guess is the point. You know, it's she, she's you, moving her back into her own world is the last place that people would look for her. Yeah. So, right. you know, Marissa continues to show her mild cunning and knowing what to do. Monster. <sighs> well, we'll get to her, boy. She's. Oof. Um. All right. I want to spend a little time on this. Well, do we want to talk about Seraphina getting the Egyptians? I thought we were essentially done with the Egyptians in a way, and I'm very happy to hear that she is now going to try to get mm-hmm. them back into the into the fold. You can't end this book without having the Egyptian the Egyptians back. I mean, the series has to wrap up with the Egyptians because they weren't in Subtle Knife at all, right? So, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. They, were, they were absent totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Fun. same with York Burnison. I mean, we're getting yeah. the players back on the board now. That's right. Mm-hmm. Too too many good characters to just leave. Mm-hmm. It's like writing 101. You've created all these amazing characters. It's like, let's let's make sure we know where they all are. Mm-hmm. Put them back on the board, just like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is what I want to spend a lot of time on, because I'm kind of obsessed with it. Foxes can sort of talk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, they have gosh. learned how to understand things, only things spoken in present tense. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> only, the, the eternal now of the fox. It, it's funny because it's like they even know, like Yurik even knows things that they won't understand because like, ah, they don't understand because we're talking in like things in the future or things in the past. They're, mm-hmm. And they're just like confused because they're sort of waiting for him to leave this carcass so they can go and eat. And it's like, eh, they don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> and the way that they translate what they heard for the cliff gas is like gibberish. Bear must go south. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Bear bear goes south. Is it was it what was it again? Oh, bear must God. go south. I hope this is in the show because this is delightful. <laughs> so I this also, begs the question. Yeah, go ahead. And 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 please hold that thought just for a second, because I, I are there a lot more animals that are figuring out how to talk in the in this world? It's got to be, right? Are they figuring out how to talk now, or weren't, are they always able to talk? It seems to be they were learning how to talk. One of the things that they say in here about how the foxes do that, it, well, it, what it says was that their brain was already too far, like, set. And so... Mm-hmm. And so they were, I guess, picking up some kind of a little bit of the language, but it's why they couldn't be totally verbal the way that like the Panzerbjorn are totally verbal. Um, and and I, I, I was stuck on this, too, Alaric. I, I, I don't because I'm wondering, too, what's the importance of it? What's the like? And I know that Pullman does that sometimes. So kind of bring up this really fantastical or kind of interesting thing. And then he's just like in other news and he goes. You know, you never mm-hmm. see it again. Um, so maybe there's a, l- a little more importance to that where they, you know, are telling the cliff gas things or they're hearing things. But it's an odd thing to me to have added. There's no real reason except for the cliff gas to now know that Lee Scoresby's dead. Which didn't seem that important yeah. at that moment. Right. And maybe maybe later it plays out to become something bigger or or touch on something bigger. But it just was like... That was a whole lot of for nothing, really. Okay, I'm reading the passage again now. Okay, and yep. Hit me. okay, the the foxes of the Arctic scavengers that they were had picked up some language, but their brains were so formed that they could only understand statements in the present tense. So I think we were just getting like their brains are just shaped in such a way that the present only works for them. Um, most but of what your and Seraphina they, they did pick those things up. So they, it wasn't like they started knowing how to speak. Mm-hmm. They were picking things up. Right. I don't think we know what the time frame was right, right. in which they were. They Thousands of years, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. They so may have, you... they could have picked it up from bears. Sure. Uh, yeah. So moving on the, um, most of what your and Seraphina said was meaning, meaningless noise to them. Furthermore, when they spoke, much of what they said was lies. So it didn't matter if they repeated what they'd heard. No one could sort out which parts were true. Though the credulous skiff get, cliff guests often believed most of it and never learned from their disappointment, which is awesome. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. So good. The cliff casts are, are sort of enigmas to me still. Like, what what is their role here? You know, they're so unusual. Uh, essentially, they're just mindless things attacking a balloon. And now they're like, they have a society and a leader. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and they're sort of like mining information. But they're kind of uh, stupid. But they're kind of stupid. <laughs> but they, they're they also thousands of years old. Mm -hmm. They've been living in, you know, in the mountains for a long time. So it's not mm -hmm. like they've, they're survivors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're sort of scavengers too, I guess, too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They eat the fox that was talking to them, right? Yeah, they yes. bite off its head. Yeah. And wow. then fight fight over their entrails, Ugh. which is a nice touch. Yes. He's Could giving it? us a lot of gross stuff in these chapters. <laughs> he really yeah. is. He really is. It wrenched off the fox's head and fought his brothers for the entrails. Gross. Mm -hmm. Gross. That's not going to be at 8 o'clock. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> BBC no. <laughs> BBC no. <laughs> um, so the fox, we talk about the fox. All right, so let's talk about Ama or Ama or what, what, how did you pronounce it? Well, I pronounce it Ama, but I don't know exactly I was, how. Said, Ama sounds the, right. Audiobook said Ama. But Ama do we want to do good. the ghost world before we get into that? The uh, Lyra's ghost world? Yes, yes, let's talk about that. Yeah. So, uh, She's hanging out with Roger. She's yeah. hanging out with Roger. I have a question about, about yep. that. Um, so in the ghost world, no um, no demons. No demons. Well, demons are gone after you die. Yeah. yeah. That's, um, that's interesting to me with, uh, with people who spent their entire lives with demons now have to spend eternity without them. Are, is that part of the soul reabsorbed? I mean, because there's sort of a soul outside of your body. Once you mm. go to the afterlife, are you rejoined in a way? So it's now inside of you again? I don't know. Or is that piece just sort of severed and gone forever? I don't think we've gotten there. We've gotten enough to know that yet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, Roger, it's interesting about the way Roger's thinking <clears throat> about how pe people's mortality and how uh people are still alive that he doesn't want to die because then they'll be where he is mm -hmm. yeah uh, awesome. was sort of a fascinating you know moment he's terrified too yeah he's wishing immortality on mrs coulter so she never yes. finds him yes yeah oh Ugh, yeah it, the uh and there's also uh more of the it, more people are listening to their conversation or trying to listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really does feel like Lyra is there. She's yeah. really crossed over or enough so that she's visible to mm -hmm. these things. And it, is it, you know, I would assume the tea is just something keeping her asleep, but it must be more than that. It must be something that's putting her into not just a sleep, but a deep, you know, like, uh, Death -like meditative sleep. state. Mm -hmm. Um, it might also be because of who she is, right? I mean, she's got, she's all Lyra, you know, mm -hmm. with, and all that, you know, everything that it entails with who she is. Mm -hmm. It it just might be her personality or her, her power that allows her to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This, uh, I still had to deal with uh, kind of going back to the to sort of bouncing back and forth between those passages because of the way they're written. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like um, for the Kindle versions, they should have done that differently. They should have figured out another way to do that. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and, sorry, go ahead. No, and the book version, I'll be honest, I was going to say, it is so distracting to me. And and, and I, 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 I almost resent them, the parts, because they give you... I don't mind that things cut off. I don't mind that they have like an, en like an ending, but the fact that they cut off in those mid-sentences, it just makes me feel like... But, and I can't, it doesn't let me smoothly transition as I'm reading into whatever's happening next. And I'm not, I, I'm trying to figure out, like, is he trying to be disrupted? You know, like, what is he trying to do with this? What, putting it in purposely like that in, before every chapter. Is he trying right. to make you feel like you're being jolted back out into the real world? That liar mm -hmm. is in this deep place and you're being jolted out. I, mm -hmm. I, I really can't necessarily put my finger on it but i don't i don't think i love it either it, it feels needlessly lynchian you know yes like, it feels very right. david lynch yeah and it it 
it's not consistent with the rest of the, the rest of the book, the rest of the series. It feels like the impact of it. If you were, if you gave a scene where, um, Mrs. Coulter put her back under just as she's about to wake. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you got a chapter of her navigating mm -hmm. or just a, a very short chapter for talking to Roger and put right. this all in one shot. Right. If she was a perspective character in the waking world, it would work. Yeah. But there, but we're switching back and forth between Ama and the war in this world. And yeah, this is not that good. Yeah. What's happening. What's happening in the land of the dead is, is so interesting and it maybe is diminished the way that it's put in because mm -hmm. it's so kind of chopped up. Well, and sure. I want to I want to look at it again when mm -hmm. I get to the next one. And it's kind of a pain to go back. And and then even when you go to the one previous it, when you're reading by chapters, mm -hmm. you almost need to go back another chapter to find out because you forgot what happened up to that point because it's mid sentence cut off. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm trying to absorb it all. I, I wish I wish I could just get get that all written out in one thing. I guess I could copy and paste it into a Google Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's an artifact, though, of the short chapters. I mean, maybe if they in, intersperse these things in one large chapter, mm -hmm. it would work better. But I, I just feel like, you know, ending a chapter is such a definitive thing to do. Mm -hmm. And then you go into this mid-sentence thing, and then, you know, we'll get some more dialogue, and then it stops mid-sentence. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, uh, again, you know, it's needlessly jarring. Yeah, and I don't even need a whole chapter of it. I just no. need I just need a, a, at least a singular like a scene. Like just mm -hmm. give me a scene. Mm -hmm. I'm okay if it's only a page long, but just let it kind of be complete and 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 that there's, you know, this idea that we're somehow, you know, wafting into where Lyra is and understanding and then, you know, we're coming back out and that can be seen. I don't mind that they're short. It's just like Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. All right, so Ama. Ama is, as you would expect, because she's young, uh, she's concerned about Lyra. She's con concerned about this ill, perpetually sleeping girl. Mm -hmm. And she wants to help. Uh, so Ama goes on sort of a quest, right? Mm -hmm. To find a way to help out Lyra. And seeks a shaman. Um, takes a long trip to seek a shaman and then kind of deceives the shaman into what she's doing and she uh, doesn't tell the whole truth but she needs something that needs to wake up uh, someone who's very sick right who's who's sort of in a in a sleeping state uh, but the the shaman knows that she's not telling the whole truth I think the last thing he says to her is like right you know, next time tell me <laughs> yeah next truth, time but. don't lie to me right <laughs> <laughs> he still makes it for her you know even though he knows she's lying but mm -hmm. um because he says he wants to make he feels like he needs to make a full examination mm -hmm. and i was like oh no 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 no, it's not that big a deal whatever she's like no, no, no that's not a good idea whatever because mm -hmm. she's gonna do it she's not gonna she's gonna do it under cover of i mean who knows how she's planning on doing it um this is a cute little moment for her and ama's taking charge and trying to figure out what to do and 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 showing some agency even though she's such she's younger than lyra what is she eight years old she's a, she's a few years younger than lyra mm -hmm. um and it's a it's pretty cute, and I wonder what he made for her. Like, what is it that that's going to do if she's able to administer it? She he has to uh, she has to brush it on, on her under her nose, right? Mm -hmm. But not too much, right? Because it could cause major problems. Okay, in my head, I'm just thinking it's like Vicks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's Tussin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Rub some tussin on. Rub some tussin on it. Uh, it's uh, yeah. I wonder what that uh, it's, it is. Sort of a curious. Uh, well, you, well, you know how with Vicks you got that scent sure. that goes up there, and that you know that can wake you up. Makes Clear you feel senses. better. Yeah. yeah, you rub it on your chest and your, mm -hmm. and your nose under your flannel. You know, <laughs> makes you feel good. Yeah, something like Vicks. But really, he's just grinding up bones and stuff right. or whatever. Yeah, herbs and bones. Yeah. So it's going to be like a dust. But, you know, it, it sounds because it sounds like it, it could be some, you know, magical thing. But we we saw in the last book that, uh, you know, when they tried to do their their own salve in Shitagaze, mm -hmm. it was useless. I mean, they ended up pulling out like uh, Bassett Tracing or whatever. 
-hmm. Yeah, so maybe this is more just something that's super aromatic, like a, mm -hmm. a, a sleeping, or a, a, I'm sorry, what is it smelling called? Salt. salt. Smelling salt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's going to like pop, you know, just wrench her out of her sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, like she's having like a, she has like a concussion or something. Mm -hmm. and what, I, what I'm finding interesting with this is uh, it kind of goes back to something that uh, I think I said back when we were reading um, The Subtle Knife is that ev all of the good characters in these this series survive by lying. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's really interesting to me. The it's all, the, the the villainous characters are the ones who mostly live by the you know they're telling the truth. And um, but uh, in this case, it, it's it's a all of the good characters lie. I mean, now we've got Ama, Will. Um, of course, um, you know, Lyra, everybody, they're all liars. Filthy, filthy liars. <laughs> <laughs> filthy, filthy liars. I mean, I, I love, I love that Ama here, that her motivation, I know that she's interested in Lyra, but, the, but, you know, the way that she sort of wants to heal or help Lyra is also because of this very strong, odd like fascination slash obsession she has with Mrs. Coulter. Like mm -hmm. I think it even says in the book, like it's like a borderline like worship. Yeah. Like she borderline worships her and, and she wants, she wants to heal Lyra almost like a gift. Do you know what I mean? Like almost yeah. as like a present to, to, to give to Mrs. Coulter who look, she thinks look is what I did for you. Yeah. Who's beautiful. And who, you know, and I don't know if she, if she has a mother, mm -hmm. I mean, we know that she has a father because the father came up with her um, at, at the first time we meet her. The father's there. But it just seems that Mrs. Coulter continually, I guess, uh, like across nationalities, across, you know, worlds, she has this effect on girls. Like on the, like they, they want to please her. They want to be liked by her. And mm -hmm. um, well, it's like she brings them into the into her club. Right. Because like. Yeah. <laughs> In the earlier chapter, when she's like, "No men are allowed up here. Can can speak to me. You know, mm -hmm. only you can speak to me." It's like, "Ooh, only I yeah. can speak to you." You know, it's uh, it's interesting the way she does it. Yeah, and so then yeah, so then she's motivated to think of this really bad. I mean, she she travels three hours to the village to tell mm -hmm. that lie to this guy. You know, and then and then God knows how far it is then from the village up to Mrs. Coulter, at least yeah. another three hours back. Maybe I think it was at least an hour away from her village, maybe. Mm -hmm. So like, that's a pretty, that was a big commitment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know what yeah. I mean? So. Which is kind of crazy. Cause I think we all have nine year olds in the house. Yes. And I can't imagine, you know, sending my nine year old <laughs> on a three hour trip no. <laughs> to some shaman's place. I can't I even mean, send mine to Walgreens. <laughs> I no, can't even send my that. husband to the store. So I don't, <laughs> he doesn't ever get the right thing. Does Philip Pullman even have children? I'm just curious. Is he married and have children? I don't know. I feel like maybe not. <laughs> his kids are like, they're super uh, you know, amazing. Our kids are going to listen to this one day and just, we, just hey, what are they hey, saying? Wait a second. <laughs> exactly. But his kids are like super capable. They are so uh, capable. <laughs> I mean, like, all right. You, okay. Yeah, they're brave in a way that I mean, children can be brave, and children can have very few boundaries, and and children can lack stranger and danger and things like that. But like, even the most precocious of kids is like, you know, rarely just walks up to strangers or goes on a you know goes up to try to can can finagle things out of people and 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 lie in in a way that that's well thought out and and has a has a purpose. Um, usually, they just you know. They they babble. Yeah, I mean, I find myself finishing these the our our, our chapters and looking at my kids, just like step up your game. <laughs> like, come on, you know. I know you're reading level, whatever, but come on, that's but you, you got to do more than that. Exactly, exactly. You need to go on a quest. Go find a shaman, <laughs> daddy. I would just be happy if my son took a shower every two days oh my God. it's like jack did you take you know it's like oh my lord getting a nine-year-old boy to bathe it's like the worst mm -hmm. oh god tell me Ugh. i have a five of course my son's five and you know he loves he's, he still loves taking baths but it's like oh i know that cutoff's happening and yep. whew, yeah. you know i know he's gonna stink 
Meanwhile, you know, my nine-year-old is uh, a queen and she likes to luxuriate. <laughs> she got the bath salts. Bath and... bombs. She literally, she gets bath bombs for holidays. Oh, oh bath man. bombs are the best. Oh. That's how you get kids to take a bath. Yeah, seriously. Sure. <laughs> have you ever had the bath bombs that have the little critters inside of them? Have you yes. ever had those? The yes. best. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we digress. <laughs> we so did. We so they did. They could have made a bath bomb to wake up Lyra. That's it. Well, let's let's just call this thing that she got a bath bomb, except she doesn't Done. need a bath. Done. Um, have we gotten? Has she gotten back to the cave yet? I, I I ran off to go plug in my computer, so I'm back. Are, is she in the cave again yet? Yeah. Um, she, what we we would have said that like she got there. Like we were just kind of talking about her her ability to lie, and then just looking at her motivation to lie, which was this admiration for Mrs. Coulter, and then she makes that trek all the way back, hours and hours and hours, yes. and she walks in and she sees that Lyra is unattended. She sees that she's alone. She sees that she's restless, mm -hmm. and she's like you know kind of like stirring. And she stands there for a minute, and she's just like ooh, but then right away, Could right so. away, mm -hmm. yeah. Coulter comes in and she has to hide. She she wedges herself into a little crevasse of some kind. Yes. Uh, where she's unseen. The the monkey, I was pretty much convinced the monkey was going to find her because the monkey's yeah. like sniffing around. Mm -hmm. I was thinking for sure she was going to be found. So she, I think it, at the moment that Mrs. Coulter returns, even though she hides, because she's not, she's like, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have come in, you know? Mm -hmm. um, she thinks Mrs. Coulter is ultimately fine, a fine person. Uh, she is quickly alerted that that is not the case, and our our old friend Mrs. Coulter, the you know what, is back with a vengeance, mm -hmm. and she gets to see all of this play out. Uh, something that we'd already seen, but also just the roughness that just I think really seeing the monkey grab Pan might have been the ultimate piece of information that she needed to know that things were not right in this situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about the cutting of the hair or what the importance of that was, if that really struck her as being odd, although she did notice it. Um, she's very rough with it. She forces her to drink this. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like she's practically strangling her, you know, to get her to drink. Oh, yeah. I mean, she is kicking. She's screaming. It isn't like it's not like she was only half awake. I mean, at, at, at some point, she is full on Lyra she's awake, fully awake. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is mm -hmm. screaming and more she's so kicking. than the last time. Yes, like, this is she was much further along here, and, and she is yelling for Yorick. Yep. Oh yeah, and she's pulling her hair back and she's trying to get her to do it. And the only way she can finally get her to do it is because the monkey grab. You know, it's that last that last bit. But she, you know, and, and it's like, and obviously in this in this, they're back in their own world, and so that little girl knows you don't touch. Mm -hmm. Like you don't touch other people's demons. And even if it was not Mrs. Coulter who was touching the demon, the other demon was manhandling it in a way that was, you know, right. un unacceptable. Right. Mm -hmm. um, this part messed me up. Like this whole part in the cave messed me up. I like, though, that Pan got the upper hand on the monkey this time. Oh, how when big he did he get? Into the, when he switched into the porcupine. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he gets uh, Quill stuck in his hand. He yes. does. He's like, yeah. Because the only reason she gets Lyra uh, to calm down, she doesn't really calm her down. She just smacks the heck out of her. Mm -hmm. And kind of, and then, you know, drugs her and puts her back to sleep. But what's what, my favorite part in this whole thing, I'm, I'm sorry, was um, when she's singing to uh, Lyra. Oh god, she doesn't, she doesn't know, know words. She doesn't words. know any songs. She doesn't know how to be a. She was never a mother. Oh, no, no. She that doesn't so have honest. that innate. She, she doesn't. It was. It was. It's not part of her. Mm -mm. She owns up to that in earlier books. You know how she mm -hmm. just that just wasn't her. Even in the show, they touch on that too. That wasn't really who she was. Mm -hmm. But this boy, this was a great way of showing that she was so disconnected from being showing any kind of motherly love to her. Mm -hmm. She never sang her to sleep before. You know, this is the first time she's ever done that. Or, yeah. or maybe sent, at least in the last, you know, 12 years. Right. Uh, it's that a very, uh, a very important sequence there. Mm -hmm. as she sold herself to Amma as a mother. Mm -hmm. right. This is my child and she's asleep. Yes. And Amma knew as soon as she saw that, that is not, she is, if she's a mother, she's not a good mother. I mean, in addition to all the, the slapping and pouring poison down her throat, you know, this, I think, sealed for her 
this is not right. Well, just, it was also creepy in like a, you know, whatever happened to baby Jane kind of way. Like they're just, <laughs> she's just like swaying and like singing. And it was so creepy. Yeah. Like it wasn't just that she didn't know words because she wasn't a good mother, but it was this idea that like, you know, where you, well, like where you're holding the dead thing and you're just like, yes, I love, like, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Like it was this weird. Like you hear like a b broken child's piano playing a tune in the background. Yes. Yes. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I was like, so, so wigged out by it. I was like, this is, and then when she cuts the hair mm -hmm. and puts it in the locket, I mean, I don't know if it's for some kind of like, it's gotta be for something crazy voodoo later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it still also plays a dual role in making her look crazy as whatever, like, you know, keeping hair, mm -hmm. cutting hair from an mm -hmm. unconscious person and keeping mm -hmm. it is creepy no matter what your gender yep. or <laughs> age or age. It's a creepy yeah. thing to do. We don't yes. do that. Humans shouldn't do that. So, yeah. and, and another thing about her, Marissa, not knowing these songs, just having a vague understanding of them is that when you're a child, and you hear them, and then you're an adult and you have children, you don't need to be retaught those songs. Mm -hmm. So this to me leads back to Mrs. Coulter didn't have yeah. a loving mother or father who sang to her and took care of her and loved her. Mm -hmm. So wh what does she come from? Like, why is she the way she is? And this is maybe a little glimpse into that because we innately know all those nursery rhymes and and lullabies you just you know you might need a very slight refresher it's so vague to her that it's almost like she's only heard other people sing them to other kids she never heard them as a child mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on here yeah, yeah in, in two paragraphs yeah yeah for sure um you know and and the way she acts in general shows a um that she has no empathy um mm -hmm. and i feel like you're taught empathy as a child um, the way that you're treated by your parents and your and your you know close friends and family, she's she's on her own, man. This is the reason why her monkey is that way too. They're just loners. They're on their own. They do their own thing. They're they're, they're on their own path. They don't need or want anyone else with them. I don't know that I would go with want. I think um, she does want someone with her. Yeah, I do. I I don't think. Maybe she wants Azriel. She wants. I, I. I mean, to be honest, I think I still think she wants Lyra in some fashion. I just do it. Maybe it's wants just, to use her. Yeah, but I think that she also wants like some affection from her because I don't think, you know, I, I. I think she would rather all of her interactions with Lyra be at Lyra's behest. Like she wishes Lyra was in the. She had Lyra's consent. For these things like she doesn't need her consent but she'd want her consent you know she's not going about it the right way certainly no, <laughs> no because yeah. because mrs Coulter, at the end of the day is that broken person you were just talking about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we get to see this whole sequence play out and ama is clearly aware that things aren't right mm -hmm. she's stuck there for quite some time um, until Mrs. Coulter and the monkey fall asleep. And she uh, bolts. She doesn't really get a chance to wake up Lyra at this moment. She may be formulating a plan, but she had to leave. She left. Mm -hmm. um, side note, we were talking about how the, the monkey's never named, right? Mm -hmm. And apparently it's only named in the stage play. Is, have they named it at all in the in the the way you're listening to it? Because that's no. sort of a dramatized version, right? A little bit. No, it's it's the book. It's got a narrator and then has uh, child, female child, uh, female child, and uh, male child. Okay. Um, reading along. Okay. Well, they did name it in the straight show. And would you like me to reveal the name of the monkey? Please. It's never revealed in the book. Ozymandias. What? Ooh. Yep. Huh. Interesting, huh? Very Ozzy interesting. Monkeyus. Ozzy Monkeyus. <laughs> I like that. that <laughs> I could cool. almost see that working, being used in the book. Like, just For that's sure. the name uh, and accepting that. 
because it is interesting. It's it's a it's a perfect name for this animal, actually. You know, Jeremy <laughs> Irons would do a fantastic voice for the monkey because oh, it would work. Yes. Yeah. Because you know, it's a guy and everything. I, I want this to happen now in my head canon. <laughs> Jeremy Irons is the voice of the monkey. He does the mocap and everything too. <laughs> they put him in the little dot suit. <laughs> <around. laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love to see the behind the scenes of that. Oh, um, so should we talk about bats at this point? Yeah, I mean, so Terranimal year, Party. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is a good moment for that, right? Sure. This is another thing that Ama has to see, has to witness happening. Um it, it's it's well known that children are can be cruel to bugs mm-hmm. and sometimes animals mostly bugs uh, but sometimes animals uh here we have a monkey treating another animal in a way that a child very young child might treat a moth or a a butterfly or something being very cruel to it um what what is the purpose of this what do we learn from this and why why did why did he do that? Well, I, I think I think part of it, you know, right before the monkey does that, it's still pulling quills out of its hand. Yes, Ooh, which so, I want to, I want to touch on that too once you finish your thought. Okay, so I think I think, you know, again, these are separate kind of beings, in some ways, and I think that it was angry and it was like it kind of wanted to get, you know, but she would never let her take it out. You know what I mean? Mrs. Culture would never let it, him take it out fully on Lyra or on Pan. Mm-hmm. So he looks at her, he motions up, and he's like, go get, you know, so she grabs him a bat for him to just take out all of his, I don't know, frustration, um, mm, I resentment. So. I like, like that take. That's interesting. That's my thought. Mm-hmm. It's like, here, hit this. You know, you just hurt this thing. Yeah. Because you need to get this out of your system. Yeah. yeah. You Which means she this. wants to hurt something, you know, because they're yeah. they're sharing some of those feelings. Sure. Yeah. And she must get some satisfaction out of it. It's just the cruelty and just the ugh, awful. I mean, it I is, can imagine. Uh, Go ahead. I was just going to say that it is interesting now that now that we know the monkey's name is Ozzy, that uh, he tore, wow. tore the head off of a bat. Wow. <laughs> <The same. laughs> what? Holy moly. Oh, wow. man. We have fallen down the rabbit hole. Ooh. Yikes. I, uh, mean, I, I could imagine that that Mrs. Coulter is feeling resentful and frustrated in that very same way towards Lyra. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yes. like easily. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like, why can't you just do this? Why can't you just like, I think not because she wants it because she loves her, but just why can't you? Why can't this just be? I mean, I say it to my children all the time. Like, why can't you just make this easy? Yeah. <laughs> like, why why am I constantly having to fight you to, like, clean up this thing? And I feel like she might be, you know, maybe she felt that same way. Like, because she literally had to fight Lyra mm-hmm. to get her back under. And so. And be careful be... not to hurt her. That's right. the thing. Like, she mm-hmm. had to hold herself back with Lyra. She does not have to hold herself back with the monkey. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. with the bat. With the bat. With the... True. Yeah. You know, he. So. You know how, you know, whenever you feel frustrated and like sometimes certain releases are necessary and like yelling into like running and finding like the deepest, darkest hole and just screaming into it is what Mm -hmm. so so many of us need. You know, you need this like release and you need to be like release an energy. You know, she doesn't have that. She's got to like do it in a smaller way and she's able to do it with this this method. And I guess it works. I don't know. It's we'll see. But it seems to be she went to sleep afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, she's so agitated before that. Mm-hmm. She ate a bar of chocolate and went to sleep. God, can you imagine a cal- something to calm yourself before bed would have your demon like tear apart another animal? Ugh. It's like she's... I gotta unwind. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she's a psychopath. I mean, it's like how uh, serial killers and mass murderers like start off killing animals. Yes. You know. This is like that Netflix show. Don't f with cats. Is that what that's about? Yeah, it's basically about. It's a three-part docu docu series about these people that are tracking someone who's been hurting cats in a neighborhood. I think it's essentially mm-hmm. what it is, and it turns out that the person hurting the cats is a serial killer. Uh, oh my! I, wow! 
<laughs> and it's like, you know, part of it is about if people, you know, we've always been told this, but if, if a person is able to hurt an animal, mm-hmm. it means that they could very easily hurt a human. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's very easy for them to transition to the next level. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to talk about the quills. Sure. This is going to be really minutia stuff here. So, are we saying that if you were uh, a demon that was a sheep, every once in a while you need to, you need to shear the fur off of it? D- do demons grow and shed their hair? Hmm. And then if Pan is still sort of bouncing around from creature to creature to creature, if the quills are able to be removed from his body what is being removed from his body if a quill is because he's essentially made of dust yeah Mm -hmm. so what what was removed from his body when he lost those three or four quills is he made of dust though i don't know he's able to change size to from a tiny bug Mm -hmm. to a big cat see i thought he was like like almost like an ethereal version of fl- almost like the angels you know how they're not true flesh mm-hmm. I, I that's how that's what i think of of uh of the of the demons as hmm. so, so i think there is an element to them that's you know there's certainly magic at work too like this that is has like mystical. mass right yeah. yeah all right okay i accept that it, it's i was like oh wow okay they can they can lose part of themselves Mm-hmm. I mean, I had that same thought, though, Alaric, which was, you know, if he can do that, how real, which is he was kind of, you know, how real are they? And then, and where does it, um, you know, obviously they're real enough that you can physically hold them a human. You shouldn't, but you can. They have weight mm-hmm. to them and you can, you know, yes. so I, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting idea. But I, aren't they, are they, why would they not be, I mean, they're, aren't they made of dust, dusty stuff? I think it's one of those, you know, from dust they begin and to dust they return. But I think in the middle, there is they're... some sort of mass. Their mass. Yeah. If if a demon was fighting another demon and a demon plucked out the other demon's eyeball, would it lose it forever? Would it just not have an eye? Or is that not? And then if it changed shape, would it still be missing that eye? Or it's like, oh, it's now it's a bird and it has two eyes again, because it's just sort of, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This is, I know, I, I told you it was kind of a little much, but it's something I wanted to discuss with you guys. Mm. Now I really wish Philip Pullman listened to and or watch our show. <laughs> Philip Pullman, would you come on our show, please? We want to ask Philip you about, de- oh, God, I, I, I wouldn't even know what the first question would be for Mm-mm. Philip Pullman. I wouldn't even know where to start. He would be like, you guys, you know, it would be like the the um, William Shatner uh, on SNL. <laughs> He's like, you know, get a life, you know, he's just like, are you kidding me? We're like, um, so if a demon lost a quill, he's like, oh my God, I wrote these books 20 years ago. Oh you know. my God, that's hilarious. Yeah. But he might get into more detail in the later books. I mean, there are... he may, I'm, I'm very anxious to read yes. the next two books. I'm mm-hmm. excited about, I mean, I'm loving this obviously, but I'm excited about moving further into this, this series. Once, uh, come June. I suppose. 19 <laughs> episodes. Yeah, we got a ways to go. Oh, boy. Which is great. I like the way this is being broken out. So do I. This so is do a I. good. This is good. I, I really want somebody to, at, at some point, like a, a kid who's reading these books, and I, and I mean specific, a kid, to, to listen to all of the, all of these shows and tell us if this at all helped them understand the books better. Yeah, it's. I feel like it's helping me understand them more as someone who's yeah. read them and, and reading them again mm-hmm. um, and just getting other people's perspectives, you guys' perspectives, and, and you guys pick up on things that I don't and you see it from different angles that I don't see it from. So I'm appreciating your takes on everything. Um, so yeah, this has been this has been fun for me. We, ha- we had a question from one of our... I, I ended up launching the wrong audio file initially earlier. Uh, in the week i put i basically did edited the whole thing and put together the whole show and uploaded it and it was last week's episode it was like the wrong episode and someone emailed us was like eh, you put the wrong episode up by the way love the show and they had a question 
and I forwarded it to you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, But we probably need to do, I want to, because we have other questions, we should compile those things for next week and have a very brief Q&A, because I think we have like three or four questions to answer. That would be fun. Questions slash comments. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be Um, awesome. But yeah, that we, again, we appreciate everybody who's listening and we're, we're, I'm very much enjoying doing these and we're going to keep doing them. Shoot, if one person's listening, I'm happy. Heck yeah. Same. I'm listening. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. I record it for myself. I do. When I cook dinner, I listen to I listen to us talk. Yeah, I can't listen. I guess I can't listen to it out loud because my daughter gives me so much grief about it. She's like, "Are you listening to your podcast?" <laughs> you know. So she's 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 already she's a precocious eight year old. Maybe she's you know giving me that's maybe maybe Pullman isn't so wrong. Maybe she's getting ready to go on a three hour quest. You don't know. God. Jeez. I, ugh, she walks so slow a three-hour quest would not be that far <laughs> judging by the way we get to school every day it's like okay she went four blocks <laughs> she made it to the bodega <laughs> see that's the problem with living in the suburbs i've got nothing like that close like walkable you know i would be a, a an hour-long quest for my kids to go to like the cvs like, I would love to have, like, a bodega, like, across the street. My parents do, and that's mm-hmm. just, that's awesome. I got five bodegas within four blocks. They have They're bodega like cats? Nothing but... Oh, yeah, of course. Everybody has bodega yes. cats. Yeah, bodega cats the way to go. Yeah, that's they're all cool. names. Our liquor store has two cats. So um, you guys have, like, stuff, man. It's great. Lots of stuff to do. Everybody knows your name. This is like Cheers. It's like the neighborhood uh-huh. of Cheers. I'd love that. Yeah, it's great. If I end up moving there after spring break, don't be surprised. Fine. You're going to love, I mean, if you come to my neighborhood, you're really going to love it. But I've got, I got other plans for you, but you know, (laughs) put put it all together. We'll figure it all out. And then we'll do, uh, Amber Spycast Con. Oh, yes. That's how we can get Joanna to come. Yes. Yes. We'll have like a live show at my theater. (gasps) And we had free tickets. There we go. That's awesome. You know, Joanna, there is a Comic-Con in writing. There is? And there is also one, I believe, in Lancaster. Like now? At this moment. Oh. It's, it's right I was now. like, right now? <laughs> right now. Like now. It's late. <laughs> it's 10 30 on a tuesday i'm not going i'm not going it's 10 30 on a tuesday out. uh no but there is and we could get a table at one of these things and do a show because it's super cheap i would love it fascinating cool. in so yeah. cool yeah totally in awesome let's look into it how far yes. is lancaster for i don't know how far that is for me uh it's equidistant for the two of us there we go a couple yeah. few a couple hours two three yeah. three hours yeah not bad yeah. Yeah. okay i can do and that then, then you can stay at the new Cartoon Network Hotel here in Lancaster. Plug, plug. What? Yeah, they what? Have a, yeah, I know we have a we have a brand new Cartoon Network um, a hotel, and it looks amazing. It's right up cool? past. It's I, I I think so. It has in and and it has. You're making fun of me now. No, no I'm, 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 <laughs> so I'm actually interested. Thank you. No. no, I've never been in there. It looks amazing. I, I, I think it has like a slide. Russia. Like I think it has like a slide and a slide. I swear to God, I saw a slide. I'm or looking maybe this it was up just tonight. my wish. Maybe it was just my wish that they had a slide. I'm this looking it up. Incredible. I'm Me ready. too. I'm ready. But you could stay there because you can't stay at my house. There's no room. Okay. <laughs> like, I mean, okay. I'll be no. Let's see. Good night, hotel. Oh my God. It's stay in the Rick and Morty suite. I still haven't watched a single episode of that. No spoilers. It's one of those things that... Uh, Has it passed me by? Is it over? It's good. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I really I really and truly love the show, but I can really understand people who don't. Okay. You know, it's an acquired taste. And there's free breakfast, Joanna. <gasps> I'm interested. Yeah. Yes. Look at this. The Cartoon Hotel. Oh, wait, no, that's Cartoon Hotel in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, you can go there, too. Maybe they have could. a con. <laughs> Dude, I bet they have our good coffee there. It'll be our world tour. It'll be our world tour. Lancaster and Istanbul, Turkey. As long as we get to do Stonehenge. All I right. would love to do a show with from them the, from the center of Stonehenge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Oh. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, this has been the Amber Spy Glass Chapters 
three and four. Three and, four. Mm-hmm. and uh, we'll jump into five and six next week. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. See ya.